Everything happened very suddenly. In the blink of an eye, Qantas went from being a recognized and respected brand, a symbol of national pride, to a greedy company that angered tens of thousands of its customers. Why did this happen? What will they do to regain their reputation and customers' trust? Let's find out the answers in today's episode. Qantas has stirred controversy and angered thousands of customers by canceling flights without offering refunds. Now, in the eyes of the Australian public, the airline is seen as nothing more than a greedy landlord looking to exploit ordinary citizens. How did this happen? Wasn't Qantas always regarded as a reputable airline? If you don't believe it, let's take a look back at a bit of the airline's history to understand why it was once considered one of the most trusted airlines and why it holds such significant meaning for the people. Qantas, short for Queensland and Northern Territory Aerial Services, is an airline with a long history. Established in November 19th, 22 by two World War I veterans, Paul McGuinness and Hudson Fish. The airline began operations with mail services and regular passenger flights, quickly becoming a popular means of transportation in Australia. In 1935, Qantas conducted its first international flight to Singapore using a Havan DH-86 aircraft. By 1938, it launched services to the United Kingdom. Although World War II posed challenges for the aviation industry, this airline continued to operate both domestic and international flights. After the war, Qantas became a government-owned corporation in 1947, allowing for upgrades to its aging fleet and the introduction of new Lockheed aircraft. The airline became the first outside the United States to operate the Boeing 707 in 1959 and the Boeing 747 in 1971, significantly expanding its domestic and international operations. This also led to the acquisition of several new Lockheed aircraft, such as Constellations, Convair 240, and eventually Super Constellations, enabling commercial flights to the United States for the first time. In 1995, Qantas was privatized, and in 1998 it became one of the founding members of the One World Alliance. Another important milestone was the launch of its frequent flyer program in 1987, which now has 16.4 million members, representing about 60% of the Australian population. However, they have faced significant criticism in recent times. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the airline was accused of failing to refund customers and canceling thousands of flights without timely notification. On August 20th, 22, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission filed a lawsuit against Qantas for advertising tickets for flights that had been canceled. They were fined 120 million AUD, but only a small portion of that amount was returned to affected customers. From being a symbol of national identity, Qantas has now become a focal point of disappointment for many Australians, raising the significant question of whether the public will forgive the airline in the future. So why are so many Australians members of Qantas's loyalty program? When traveling abroad, Australians also want good access to destinations like Europe and North America, which is not easy due to the vast distances involved. Therefore, considering Australia's geographical and social context, the country is just about 5% smaller than the 48 contiguous states of the US, yet its population is only around 27.3 million people, with most of the population concentrated in coastal areas. Approximately two-thirds of the population lives in urban areas. While domestic travel often involves vast distances, making flying an important mode of transportation. Therefore, having a strong and healthy national airline with a suitable fleet and the ability to serve these far off destinations is crucial for the people of Australia. This airline also needs to offer enough tickets at reasonable prices, which is vital for what is about to unfold. When combining all these factors, you can see that Qantas today is not just part of Australia's identity abroad. Rather, it is a national airline that holds much more significance for the people of this country compared to the ceremonial value that most other national airlines possess. Alan Joyce, former CEO of Qantas, led the airline for nearly 15 years after advancing through various positions. His journey began at Aer Lingus in Ireland before moving to Australia to work for Ansett Australia and later joining Qantas. He became CEO in 2008 when the aviation industry faced significant challenges due to the financial crisis. Under Joyce's leadership, Qantas faced many difficulties, including job cuts and reporting its first financial loss since privatization in 2012. Although the cost-cutting measures were not popular, Joyce was considered a skillful executive who helped the airline navigate tough times. For example, on March 20th, 20, 
Joyce voluntarily gave up his salary for a period to support the company, only resuming his basic salary in August of the same year. Do you think the CEO's leadership is the main reason for that big problem happening? In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, Qantas had to carry out thousands of staff cuts to maintain operations. However, the airline quickly faced numerous complaints from passengers, particularly when thousands of flights were canceled. Instead of refunding passengers, the airline issued travel vouchers, but their expiration dates were too short, leading to a class action lawsuit. Although the airline removed the expiration dates in the summer of 2023, complaints continued to rise as domestic flight prices nearly doubled compared to pre-pandemic levels. As borders reopened, Qantas operated only about 50% of its pre-pandemic flights, leaving many passengers disappointed. Qatar Airways CEO Akbar Al Baker criticized the airline, while Qatar proposed increasing its flights to Australia, but this was rejected by the government, indicating clear protectionism in the favor. Additionally, in 2020, they laid off 1,700 baggage handlers and then outsourced these positions to weaken union power. The court ruled that the airline had illegally dismissed these employees. All of this occurred as Qantas reported a record profit of 2.47 billion AUD in 2023, further intensifying criticism. The airline received approximately 2.7 billion AUD in government support during the pandemic yet it stated there were no plans to repay the amount. On August 29, 2023, Qantas was sued by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, ACC Short, for selling tickets to thousands of cancelled flights. The airline continued to advertise tickets for at least 8,000 flights for weeks without timely informing passengers. This means that people were paying for flights they would not be able to take. As pressure mounted, CEO Alan Joyce decided to step down earlier than planned. Shortly after his departure, people began to question whether Alan Joyce should receive his retirement payout after everything that had happened, including the bonuses. Ultimately, he received 9.26 million AUD, more than half less than the initially expected 21 million AUD. Vanessa Hudson, the chief financial officer, was appointed as the new CEO and apologized for the company's mistakes. Initially, the ACC said it would seek a record fine of 250 million AUD for selling tickets to cancelled flights, which would be double the largest fine ever issued to a company in Australia. However, Qantas and the ACC eventually reached an out-of-court settlement. Under the agreement, the airline had to pay 120 million, about 79 million for this incident. Of that amount, 100 million AUD was a fine, and only 20 million went to the affected customers, all 86,000 of them meaning each received an average of 232 AUD, or about 56 AUD per person. This event highlighted that although Qantas achieved significant profits, its actions in handling customers and staff, this event highlighted that although Qantas achieved significant profits, its actions in handling customers and staff caused public outrage and left the airline in a challenging position regarding its reputation. Meanwhile, recently, the airline announced its latest financial results after a turbulent year. Although revenue increased, underlying profit dropped by about 16% to over 2 billion AUD. While this is still a large figure, the decline was due to reduced earnings from both domestic and international routes, leading to a 16% decrease in profit. For example, earnings before interest and tax in the domestic segment fell by 16%, while the international segment saw a 39% decline. Although not uncommon and certainly not alarming, company leaders attributed this to ticket prices returning to normal levels and capacity adjustments. They capitalized on operational performance improvements driven by investments, including enhancements to the frequent flyer program, seating, digital platforms, and onboard amenities. The Contest Group stated that their focus over the past year has been on repairing the fractured relationship with customers, which has damaged the brand's image. As a result, the general sentiment is that Qantas at this point is willing to accept a reduction in profits to make long-term investments to ensure that they can regain their position as a national airline that people are proud to speak of. Qantas currently controls over 60% of all domestic flights in Australia. Alongside other issues, frequent last-minute flight cancellations and the airline's favored position have caused a shortage of available slots at major airports. The shortage may have contributed to the, to the financial struggles of smaller carriers and startups across the country. Qantas's slogan is the spirit of Australia. 
But to many Australians, the airline has transformed from a source of national pride into a disappointment in a relatively short period. While their recent financial outlook seems bleak, the way they've managed their operations suggests they have built up significant reserves. The real question now is whether Australians are willing to forgive their national airline. What's your take? Please leave your thoughts below. Thanks, and wish you always have the safe flights.